I'm an optimist by nature. When I hear no, I hear not yet. My reaction was, this isn't good. But I also knew once I had the diagnosis that I had to be a pragmatist about it. I'm Adrienne Skinner. I'm 60 years old. I am a single working mother with four daughters. I have a great life. Lynch syndrome in my family was discovered 12 years ago. My sister went in for a procedure because she had had a bad pap smear. What happened was she was in surgery for 14 hours because during the time that the surgeon had her on the table, the surgeon discovered three distinct cancers. She had ovarian cancer, she had colon cancer, and she had endometrial cancer. At that point, knowing that Lynch is genetically passed along, they tested all of us. I have it. My sister in the middle, who was the surgically discovered one, has it, and not the youngest one. My mother is the carrier. I have four daughters. Three of my four daughters are also Lynch syndrome. And with Lynch, there's an 80 to 90% lifetime risk of digestive tract cancer. So in my mind, it was not if, it's when and which one. Late January of 2013, I went in for my annual colonoscopy. I had the, to have the blood work done. And my gastroenterologist called me and said, your liver enzymes are off the charts. You need to come in for a scan. That was on a Friday. By Monday, I'm back at the hospital getting an MRI and a PET scan, and they could see there was a mass. They couldn't tell exactly where it was or that it was cancer necessarily. At that point, it was, I had to have surgery. You know, it's like, how do I get this out of here? What happened was that Dr. Allen, when he opened me up with his team, discovered that there were spots on the liver. So at that point, he took out my gallbladder and closed me back up because they couldn't do the surgery knowing that this, this cancer had now spread. He explained to me that I needed chemotherapy. Over the course of a full year, it was all chemo. I got my affairs in order. I, you know, redid my will. I set up trusts. I made arrangements for the care of my youngest daughter. I did all the things that I could do given what the possible outcomes could be. Probably the hardest thing that I did was sit with my daughter's high school counselor. And uh, she was a senior. Actually, sorry, this was in the middle of her junior year. I asked to see the counselor. And I had to tell them, I said, look, I don't know if I'm going to be here in the fall when she has to do wow, her uh, college applications. My philosophy in all of this was find the absolute best person medically. And once I was convinced that they were the best people, I trust them. The chances of the chemo solving this problem were pretty slim. That I knew. So a clinical trial on something that she felt might address it seemed to me to be the best alternative. When I started the treatment, my cancer antigens were at about uh, over 170, and the normal range is zero to 33. So it was clearly active cancer. Within two to three treatments, the numbers started to come down a lot. And they could see that things were working very quickly. So one of the agreements with this trial was that I would have an endoscopic biopsy done of the tumor uh, within three months of starting treatment. When I come to, the surgeon comes over to me and says, if somebody hadn't told me you have ampullary cancer, I wouldn't have known, because there's nothing in there. And that was a miracle. I live a very full life and I'm blessed. I, my oldest daughter's getting married in September. I'm here to see it. We're able now to do a kind of clinical trials that weren't possible 10 years ago because of the nature of what is now known. That could only have happened through the research that's been done to date, and there's much more to do. This particular drug works because of my particular genetic defect. There are all sorts of genetic defects that are causing cancers. They will be found, but the, the research to do those is only possible if we fund it. <laughs>